Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. Wednesday, Wednesday. How are you, Dr. Paul? Doing well, doing good. well, and uh, hopefully better than the Biden family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wonder if they're worried. But we should never pick on a family. You yeah. know, families are important, but yeah. we're going to talk about somebody who in public office, and uh, it is of, of value to us to know what's going on because people, citizens, have a consequence of what they, these guys do. But anyway, we want to talk about the, some of the news that came out on, on Biden. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, he, he, it's been revealed that he and his family have been involved in corruption and illegal gain of funds. I don't know if that could be possible, but, no. you know, all things are possible. And I guess they're out there, um, the Republicans are rounding up the usual suspects and uh, finding out what's really going on. But uh, there's other things going on, too, today. Santos uh, was, was arrested, yeah. and, uh, and uh, there were other, other things, uh, and, and the Biden, you, you know, issue has all been going on. So uh, we'll try and dissect this out, but uh, I can't believe much good is going to come from the little bit of information I have. But uh, you, you just wonder. So this is this is not brand new. This is stuff that's been going on. Uh, the incident they talked about today uh, had to do when he was vice president. Yeah. Well, what what is he doing since then? Is he clean ever since then? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, but uh, I guess when you have the power of the presidency, you can accomplish a lot of things. But uh, it it is discouraging, and it's an, uh, it's no wonder that some people just like to stay away from politics yeah. because it's so. so so disgusting, yeah. but uh, they, it looks like the family uh, was involved and they set up a lot of companies that yeah. uh, were supposed to, supposed to, I think they had more than a $10 million in these special companies. Each person had an account and it was, had special t taxing structure. And then I keep wondering when it mentions they, it's, uh, it's done for taxes. Uh, the taxes have to be reported when you have these special uh, special structures, but uh, but it does raise question. It 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 would b b will be ironic because sometimes some of the worst criminals, you know, confess, yeah. but they get held for taxes. taxes That's, that yeah. sends a message: don't mess up with your taxes. <laughs> yeah, no have no idea what's going to happen here, but he certainly got in the news, and uh, uh, I don't think it would raise his uh, poll numbers. I don't think this is going to help help Biden, but uh, he's still in the race. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is fascinating. Put this first one up because the, the House Oversight Committee just released a report today, and that's the big news. And we should emphasize that we have not studied this report in its entirety. We cannot speak to the veracity of each one of these uh, claims that they make. And of course, it is a Republican majority on the committee so there is some incentive for them to point these things out nevertheless if you just look at the bill of particulars it certainly has a smell about it uh, smells about as fresh as the air and uh, where biden uh, is in delaware if we can go back to that beginning that first one please uh, we had a problem with that there we go so biden family tried to hide over 10 million in foreign payments claims the house gop now, when I saw that, Dr. Paul, I was a little disappointed because 10 million kind of seems like small potatoes, but maybe that's the tip of the iceberg. But here's a summary according to Zero Hedge, which I think is a pretty fair beginning of what they found. The Biden family received and tried to hide over 10 million in payments from foreign nationals, a previously undisclosed million dollars in Romanian linked payments. That's pretty weird. Ties to Romanian influence peddling a web of 20 limited liability companies created while Biden was vice president with a complicated corporate structure. At least 15 of those LLCs were formed after he became VP in 09, several of which were co-owned or co-owned by Hunter, you know, that notoriously brilliant businessman <laughs> and painter and author uh, and role model for millions of Americans. Uh, Anyway, I'm just joking. These LLCs accepted payments ranging from 5,000 to 3 million. The committee wants to know what legitimate business the Biden family was in. Now that's the real question. So you set up all these companies around your family while you're vice president. You're doing millions of dollars worth of business. So the question is, what are you, are you buying and selling something? What is the product? What are you making? What are you creating? 
what's going on? That's probably a legitimate question. How did you earn these $10 million? Well, this is going to put the president in a little bit of a bind because the evidence looks like it's uh, uh, accumulating and he's going to have a hard time because he's he's he like a father ordinarily does they they can't stand you know to see a child a son in trouble yeah. so he has declared that uh, hunter is the smartest man he ever met oh, nice. <laughs> and a great and a great businessman well, he was in washington so that could be true <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> smartest man in the administration yeah. now it's it's a sad story but it's a consequence of of of, of corruption they're they're um, you know, the whole process, and 90, 98% of everything they do up there does not fit into the category of, oh, well, let's check it out and see if it's in Article 1, Section 8. Do you think we have permission to do yeah. this? And all this nonsense. And, and you talk about uh, how, well, could this be, have anything to do with inflation, the banking system, uh, the interventionist foreign policy we have, the military industrial complex? Who knows what it could involve? But I'll tell you what, if we had a true republic, this kind of nonsense wouldn't be going on. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, what, what is interesting about this, and just having glanced through it, and I did, I did a word search because I was curious, and I think this, this will give you a sense of a bit of partisanship on the Republican side here, is that there are tons of references to China, because that's the bogeyman of the day. But there were only two short references to Ukraine. And this whole thing started, I think, when the laptop came out before the election, uh, and we knew even before that that somehow Hunter Biden was on the board of Burisma, which is some gas company in Ukraine making 50, 80 grand a month. Uh, there wasn't very much about Ukraine because the Republicans like backing Ukraine with some exceptions, but there's a lot about China. But here is the, um, the little bit about Romania. And now again, this is not big bucks. However, the timing is really interesting. If we can skip ahead to that one that just has two paragraphs. Now this is a summary that um, Jonathan Turley did and everyone is sort of acting quickly with the information that just got out. If we can do that one that say during this period, if we can call that one up, and this is Turley's point. And again, as an attorney, as a lawyer, as a constitutional law specialist, he understands that a lot of it is about when things happen. So here's what Turley uh, said, a couple of tweets. During this period, Biden in May 2014 was speaking about corruption in Romania, okay? And then in September of 2015, a little over a year later, Biden welcomed the Romanian president to Washington. Oh, must have fixed the problem. Then five weeks after that, money flowed to the Biden associates through multiple accounts. Haley Biden received some of this money as well. The $3 million payment from Romania is clearly a focus of the committee, writes Turley. Armstrong saying that Romanian payments follow a pattern with the Chinese payments. Biden comes over there and says, you guys are all corrupt, you're terrible, this and that. A little bit later he says, hey, you guys are all right now. And then the money starts flowing. Maybe they've just developed a casual, honest friendship. And yeah. they, <laughs> if they visit on occasion. Now, that, that, that is obviously a huge mess, but I think it's going to linger for a while. And if, if uh, indeed this was going on when uh, Biden was vice president, just became vice president yeah. and was wheeling and dealing, my guess is that there's been a lot in between, yeah. <laughs> from between those dates and what's going on now. I, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, persistent and that's the way Washington operates but uh, some sometimes uh, they they aren't too smart on how they hide yeah, these things yeah. all this stuff you, greedy. You, know, you know and they have information but 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 they did pull something off you know, the briefcase is an interesting story briefcase a hunter's briefcase all this information yeah. and they were able to you know with all this evidence they they're able to get 51 top people in our security department yeah. you also practically swear on a note yeah. oh this is this is it's all russia's fault yeah, yeah you know and then they find out a lot of people said you know if i had known that i don't think i'd have voted for this yeah. guy yeah. but that, that that is such a shame but it's it's sort of amazing how they get away with it but is it's a combination of a corrupt society it's it's amazing but a, a justice department that goes on 
and uh, and, and they are able to do it. And I think the um, uh, the political system is just the the elections that we're engaged in. Uh, and uh, I I uh, have had a little bit of experience there. And there's a lot of cheating yeah. that so goes on in a, in a, it's just uh, not, and the whole thing is is you know today if you say I want a recon I think we've been robbed. Oh, you're a terrorist. You're yeah, a terrorist. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get you for this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We remember, I think we, we showed it on this show a while ago, I'm sure, but, you know, the corruption in Ukraine where you had this, Biden was bragging at some event saying, I told that Ukrainian prosecutor that, you, you know, Ukrainian president, you fire that prosecutor, you're not getting this billion dollars. I mean, he openly joked about it. That was a prosecutor that was investigating his own son. So we do know a lot of this is going on. And it happened. <laughs> yeah, and they got rid of him. Remember, he said, well, son of a gun, we fi he fired him. <laughs> But anyway, I'm going to show this is the memorandum from the committee, um, if you can look at it, uh, if you do that next one. So this is the uh, U.S. Congress Committee on Oversight and Accountability Majority Members, uh, and this is the, if we can go to the next one, just to give you a, a sense of what, this is like a 39-page document. It has a summary, it goes into detail of certain aspects, basically stuff that we've covered already. If you go to the next one, I think there is something... The one mention of Ukraine is interesting. On October 22nd, 2020, and this would be heavy into the campaign, Biden, then a presidential nominee, stood before the American people in a televised presidential debate and answered a question about whether there was anything inappropriate or unethical about his son's business dealings in Ukraine or China. President Biden denied that his son or anybody else from the family received money from China and stated, quote, my son has not made money in terms of this thing about what you are talking about China. I've not have. The only guy who made money from China is the big guy, Donald, is this guy, Donald Trump. He's the only one. No one else has made money from China. So, uh, you know, these claims might be undermined by some of the stuff they are discovering. Yeah, the, the coverage is obviously uh, done on purpose, you know, and in the middle of campaigns, this stuff goes on. And what about Santos getting arrested today? Our yeah, favorite member of Congress, well, second favorite you, member of Congress. You, you know, um, you, you wonder about that because everybody knows what he's been up to yeah. and what he's been doing. <laughs> but uh, it, it uh, may be uh, maybe a distraction, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, look at Drudge, the headline is Santos, yeah, nothing yeah, about and, Biden. Uh, so some of the other things about the corruption, no, but, you, you know, but there's nothing new about Santos in yeah. a way. I mean, uh, what, what, what can be new? And uh, it's, it's not, I don't believe it's a coincidence yeah. <laughs> that that happened. Yeah. Not, nothing like that, than reporting of media events and the politicization of it all. It's uh, usually not a coincidence, not you a know. Coincidence. It's, it's, stra it's, it's strategy and we've done research, we, we know what to do. Yeah. But sometimes they, um, they get caught in a, in a bad deal. And, well, unfortunately, the people, if they were more alert, uh, and they're not, is the people could, you know, you know, stand up to it and change their tune, uh, which we've witnessed here. You know, they've changed their tune and understanding of COVID and all. But it, it is tough to compete with uh, the amount of money and power and control of the media, the control of the government that they have for people just because they know the truth. They can, can they can cancel, you know, uh, people who are telling the truth. I mean, if you're a good journalist, all of a sudden you might not get the credibility you deserve. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, the um, if the, the other thing, if we can go to this now, you can condemn this as a, and I'm sure the Democrats, some will try to do this, a partisan Republican attack on on Biden, and that might be the case. But I would suggest just a couple of numbers that I dug up. There may be some Democrats who aren't unhappy to see some of this stuff come out about Biden. And let's go to the next one because I just looked up uh, Gallup's uh, survey of Joe Biden's presidential job approval ratings. He is at 37%, the lowest point in his presidency. Uh, his highest was 57 when he first took office in 2021. Um, but it is extremely low. And to put that in perspective, we can put the next one up. This is other presidents in the April month. Now, remember, Biden is at 37. And you look down the list, Trump, 46, Obama, 44, George W. Bush, 70, Bill Clinton, 48, 
George Herbert Walker, 79. Reagan is down there low at 42. But look at Carter in April of 79 at 40. And he got wiped off the map by Reagan in 80. And you see Biden below that. And if you look at the next one, this is my next exhibit in my suggestion that some Democrats aren't going to be unhappy if Biden goes down over this. Most Democrats don't want Biden to run again, poll finds. But they'll probably vote for him anyway. So it's an AP NORC poll suggesting that most Democrats even don't want him to run again. You know, I think that there's a good chance what you're saying is exactly right. But, you know, that's no easy task to deal with, mainly uh, because they might find something. Uh, the Republicans were a little shrewder back in the, with, the, with dealing with Nixon. Uh, they didn't want Agnew and they had to get rid of him first. And that was a neat little trick. Before you knew it, he was a really bad guy. So he had to resign and then they get rid of the president, you know, get rid of Nixon. But here, if they uh, if they get rid of Biden right now or damage him and he still runs, what we're dealing with is this whole uh, this whole thing of uh, Kamala Harris. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You she, mentioned she, that before the show. She, she is a she is a a, a menace. <laughs> but sometimes I think uh, the Republicans, you know, fairly could use a fairly just uh, show pictures. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. Know, for credibility, you know. Of course, that's done with Trump too. That's how they 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 try to destroy him. Except they overkill. Yeah. After you impeach a guy twice, yeah. <laughs> and you never get one of a see an impeachment should be, uh, you know, just out of common sense should be supported by both parties at least to a degree. To a degree. Yeah. But that is so so blatantly. Uh, uh, you, you know, partisan, and uh, in other times uh, the uh, it would have would have got, by. but they were able to to do this, and uh, and yet you know Trump gets he he benefits from it. Well, when when is another? When is it? Oh, that was yesterday. Yeah. Well, he probably raised some money last night or something. Yeah, for doing because, that. Because they lose all credibility, they overkill, and yet there's probably a lot of problems there that they could they could deal with. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, that might be Biden's best insurance policy is the fact that uh, Kamala Harris may step in if he doesn't go. Yeah. I mean, if he, yeah, if he doesn't run, because, you know, you suggested it before the show, and I'm going to say it out loud, but, you know, all the Republicans would, would need to do was put in like a 30 second clip of her talking about anything, literally. <laughs> And they say, "This is. Are you tired of this?" You know. <laughs> and then Biden bumbling put the two of them together, and you have uh, <laughs> who knows what. Anyway, I guess we should move on. And this is kind of a heads up on legislation. If we could do the next one, this is uh, thanks to our friend Ryan McMakin over at the Mises Institute. This is from Mises Wire. The new immigration bill is a Trojan horse for E-Verify and is a threat to all Americans. Now you've been writing about E-Verify for years and years, warning people about it, and it looks like it's reared its head again. You know, it was early on because the bill, the original bill on that that came up was in 1997, and, and that was the year I went back to Congress. I, I got rested up. I was there <laughs> a few terms, then went back to medicine, but then 96 I ran again. So that was er early on. And uh, r really, it was the monetary issue and foreign policy that had motivated me, but uh, the, the security I issue and the privacy issue became something I got intensely interested in. And you, you mentioned Norm Singleton's uh, name, yeah. and uh, Norm uh, was a good researcher on that and kept close eye on this. And uh, this, uh, this is something that is, uh, is is devastating. It's going to tremendously increase the power of the federal government. Yeah. And if you're looking for uh, uh, you know, you know, a, a, a system of knowing everything that goes on, this will be a concession. Right now, what's, what is available is that you can voluntarily do it, and the states under the Constitution can do it, and some of the states are doing it. But if you put it in this bill the way it is, uh, and uh, we, we have to remind people that if you listen to some conservatives and libertarians, and they might say, well, this bill is not all that bad. It's sort of curtailing some of the things the federal government, the government's doing. And, and it's true. But that's not unusual that they'll put a few good things in yeah. and put the member of Congress in a bind. I can't vote against that. It's improving it here, but it's destroying it over here. And my rule to myself to keep me thinking straight is you can't you can't compromise on it because if you give up 
let's just say 5% of the bill is bad. Yeah. Well, you know, if you do this, get 5% of your freedoms up in order to get something that is should be automatic with the Constitution, eventually you don't have much freedom left. So yeah. I don't like that at all. But there are some things in there that uh, on, on the surface looks like it could be beneficial in uh, in protecting the, the people. But uh, no, that, that hasn't, uh, the, the people have not uh, responded on that issue. They'll say, well, uh, uh, they better look at the big picture and what it means. And this is a massive uh, surveillance system. And the federal government will be run it, running it for all kinds of reasons that yeah. they'll, they'll want to do. Well, the bill is called the Border Security and Verification Act of 2023. And I believe Ryan said it's going to be on the floor this week. I haven't looked at the floor schedule this week. Uh, but as you say, Ryan points out that buried in the bill, among other things, they're probably not that awfully bad is this nationwide e-verify mandate and it's been around and a few states have adopted it as states but this will be nationwide it'll be a nationwide database what it means is that you have to prove to your employer that the federal government allows you to work now a lot of republicans and conservatives are opposite of your position on this because they say we got to keep those illegals from their jobs we can't let them work not realizing that it's not just illegals that are going to have to show their papers to work. It's every single American. And, you know, back when Norm and I and the rest were working on this, we talked about how many false positives and false negatives there were. Uh, you know, you could be trying to get a job and you, you uh, enter your verification and you're rejected for, for an error, a government error reason. You may not get that job. Uh, it can go on and on. So, but the, you know, the, a lot of Republicans and conservatives would say, oh, Ron, you know, this is wrong. It's not going to go after a regular American, just after illegals. Well, these are the same people that said, oh, Ron, the Patriot Act is only going to target terrorists. <laughs> They're not going to spy on us. It's never going to happen. So it's, um, you know, once bitten, twice shy. It should be, uh, unfortunately, on this. You know, I asked somebody once who was very much up to date on how the Soviet system uh, was able to maintain order <clears throat> without having millions and millions of soldiers marching in the streets. And it was economics. Yeah. So if, uh, if somebody wasn't doing as they should and they disobey the government, uh, they, what they do is they take away an economic benefit like their job and uh or their home and all of a sudden it becomes very very powerful but in a way isn't that's what they were doing with uh the lockdown yeah. is uh, they would come down and if you do it if you don't join your your job is going to be undermined you may lose your job and uh you may lose your income you may lose your license to practice medicine and all of these things so so economic penalties and, and that that is uh, you know prevailing i think this e-verify is just another tool where they can wheel and deal on punishments and uh, and, and manipulating, and they're going to be very much involved in uh, the immigration thing. You know, yeah. they'll, they'll be uh, they'll be approved. Of course, they can't approve more than what they've already approved of the numbers of people coming in. Yeah, well, uh, Brian <coughs> quotes a couple of things from Thomas Massey that make some very good points. It reminds me of the stuff you were saying back then, but updated for our current uh, situation. And he talks about how this nationwide database of who can and can't work really could be used to help implement the social credit scores in some way or the other. Because if they, as you say, economics, if they can prevent you from working, they can get you to do whatever they want for any other reason. And he also makes the other point is this nationwide database can also be used to mandate vaccines. They already tried it once and they almost did it. For some people in some sectors, they did do it. This, that was the test switch. This could be as, uh, here's what Massey says, imagine giving Biden the ultimate on-off switch for employment called E-Verify. See, he would love to have done that, but he wasn't able to because there wasn't this nationwide database. So anyway, this, the story is this is bad news. It's gonna be on the floor this coming week and people should pay attention to it. Yes. Yeah, they really should. Well, well let's move good. on to money, 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 Dr. Paul. Uh, if we can go to that next one, U.S. and U.K. vowed to aid Ukraine regardless of counteroffensive outcome. This is from the Washington Post. The foreign secretary of the U.K. came over, met with Blinken. They both gave a press conference and said, we are going to continue writing checks to Ukraine. We're not going to stop regardless of what happens. Hmm. Even if they start losing, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> this is, maybe this is a warning <laughs> yeah. is the, and get people be prepared. But, you know, it's utter nonsense. Uh, 
you, you know, he goes on and on. These, these senseless, undeclared, unconstitutional wars, uh, I don't think they just may well be designed to be perpetual. Yeah. You know, perpetual war for perpetual peace. But the peace never seems to come. And uh, they're, they're assuring people, but they don't, they don't know that the thing that ends empires is not just talk and bluff. It's also real money and real wealth, and uh, that's what is a threat to us now because our uh, empire is being threatened because it was requiring more and more authoritarianism, more and more spending, more and more debt, more and more inflation, all these things, and uh, eventually that is what ends this activity. And if it gets to the point where you say, oh no, we're going to, um, we're going to send them money forever, well, maybe maybe this won't be that even that statement it may reassure a few neocons but guess what i don't think the neocons uh when when everybody knows what's going on uh are running the world they, they run a lot but i think when the information is out there the people are going to say no we've had enough but unfortunately it takes so long and when i think of the 60s how long it took for the people to finally say enough is enough all the killing and then we we left and uh it, 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 what, what was won? nothing yeah. nothing they and i thought well Maybe they learned a lesson, mm. but the lesson didn't last very long. George Bush said, I want to get rid of that. So he was one of the successful war. So he started that little war in, in, the, in Iraq and in the, in the Middle East. I, I think it's time to remake the Middle East. Well, he didn't do so well there, and that ended up mm. badly. And then there's Afghanistan, and uh, th then there's Syria. It goes on and on. So a good, healthy bankruptcy might restore liberty faster than us promising that we're going to spend uh, forever and take care of the military industrial complex. And look at how the, the message of the administration, as reflected in the Washington Post, which is the, you know, the paper of record, the state journal, um, look how the rhetoric has changed now. It was, if we only give them some more weapons and money, they will win. They can do this. How many general after general after former general, they can do this, they can win. If we just give them another tranche, of money and more weapons they can win. Now listen how the tune has changed. If we can put the next clip, this is from that Washington Post article, and look at how the tune has changed now. Re Britain and the U.S. will continue supporting Ukraine regardless of whether its military can recover territory from Russia in a planned counteroffensive. That doesn't sound too confident anymore. And you move on. <clears throat> British Foreign Secretary James Clevery and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken speaking in a joint news conference in Washington, said they were committed to ongoing aid for Ukraine despite mounting questions about what the spring operation can achieve in the face of intense Russian resistance. So clearly now there is a change in tone in the administration, even though we don't think this counteroffensive is going to be that awfully successful, we still have to give them more money and more weapons. And that goes back to what you said when this whole thing started, the U.S. is going to fight Russia down to the last Ukrainian, and that's what this sounds like. But even more than that, Ukraine itself seems to have lost confidence. Look at this next one. This is from that same article. They seem to realize, they seem to no longer believe in their mission. Top Ukrainian officials have said they worry the offensive, which aims to recapture areas seized by Russia following Putin's invasion, could fall short of Western expectations potentially jeopardizing needed assistance. This does not sound like Ukraine is winning to me. You know, during the campaign, when I would bring up this, this subject and, and, and suggested that we bring the troops home, which they interpret as being a surrendering, yes, yeah, surrendering our stupid policy, that's one thing. But uh, the one thing that they would use that was the most difficult because it's, uh, it's very sensitive, and that is there's a lot of people who died for this and a lot of people have been injured. And if you just walk away, are you going to, and they pointed right to me and they said, does that mean you're going to allow them to have died in vain? Yeah. And how, how, how do you answer that? And I would, uh, I w I would say that uh, if, if they uh, die, die in vain, I said, uh, how is sending more in there? 
more money, more troops, more death, more destruction, more tax on our liberties, and say that will do something to assuage the the dying in vain business. Yeah. You have to stop the. You, it, it's only worthwhile if you learn something about it, these the, these disaster. But we we might learn a lesson for a week or two, and or deceive the people for a little bit. But uh, un until they decide that the principle of the foreign policy ought to be somewhat related to the principle designed in our Constitution, this is going to continue. Uh, and then it gets really messy when we have to declare the next stage of our bankruptcy. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's put on this next one because this is a clip from the DOD, Defense Department, announcing just yesterday, Dr. Paul, despite U.S. expressing doubts that Ukraine is going to win, despite even Ukraine expressing <laughs> doubts that this thing's going to go well, despite all of this, uh, the U.S. has announced, if we can put that up, more money for Ukraine, even though there's a lack of confidence across the board. The U.S. government is taking another $1.2 of our dollars and shipping it over to Ukraine in a war it no longer believes Ukraine can win, certainly in the short term. And this is not an uh, uh, original thought of mine, Dr. Paul. So when other people have been talking about this. My guess is they're looking for an off-ramp. And the off-ramp is going to look like something like when George W. Bush said mission accomplished and tried to pretend that the Iraq war was over when in fact it had only begun. I think what they want to do is instead of their original claims that Ukraine will take back every inch of territory that the Russians occupy, they're going to say Ukraine won because it stayed more or less a country, more or less Ukraine, uh, and that's going to be the, the benchmark that they have. They're, they're shifting the benchmarks, I think. But I do want to, before we close, while we have our larger audience now, uh, I do want to thank our sponsor for May, and that, of course, is fourpatriots.com. They're coming up, and Dr. Paul, we had a heck of an electrical storm last night, and I was expecting at any moment for the power to go out. I do not have a generator. I wish I had the Patriot Power Generator 2000X <laughs> provided by 4Patriots.com because the amazing thing about it is that it's not a gas generator, which they're, yeah, they can be very good, but they can also be dangerous. This is a solar powered generator. This is a new generation of portable, safe, silent, and 100% fume free generators. It's now available within the reach of all Americans uh, at a price that most Americans can afford. It's a solar generator that doesn't use gas. It doesn't have fumes. It's not loud. It's quiet as a laptop. You can move it. You can upgrade it. You can add power to it. It's portable. Throw it in your motorhome. Throw it as you run away from the storms like I felt like doing last night. But the great thing about it is you can use it to power your phones, medical devices, or even your refrigerator. And the best thing about it is you can get 10% off this and all items on 4Patriots.com if you use RON as your code. That's 10% <coughs> off. Go to 4Patriots.com. The link is in the description right now. Get your 10% off. Don't be sweating like I was last night, worrying that the power is going to go out. So, Dr. Paul? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have... Uh, you're finished? Uh, yeah, I'm finished. I just hope that people will get the tickets to the conference. That also is in the description below. Oh, there. Right. Don't Good. forget that. Come All right. That's it. it. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to close with a, st a brief statement because I found an outrage in the news today. I, I, an outrage, Ruth. <laughs> yeah, they're easy to find. <laughs> Which one are you going to pick? So the one I picked today is uh, this one happens to be on not exactly a libertarian site. It says U.S. government cancels $42 uh, billion in public service workers' student loans. And uh, then I look into this. And that's, that's just a little bit. They've been doing it all, all along, but they, uh, Biden wants to move it up to $400 billion. I wonder where he's going to get this money, you know, go, to go, go on. But the program is deeply flawed. And guess who? The, the, the people who either never got some benefits or the ones who paid back their loans, they're the ones who are going to be taxed for this. So it, it, it just was not part of a moral society. It's not part of a constitutional society for people to be taking money from one group and giving it to other. And uh, then the, the benefits of this cannot 
not outweigh the uh, violations of our liberties, and uh, the, it soon, pretty soon, it's going to add up to a lot of a lot of money. But it's still there. And the other thing that impressed me or annoyed me was the fact that it's an announcement. I thought, well, maybe they don't even have legislation to do it. No, there is legislation, uh, but the the management of it falls into the hands of the executive branch. And uh, it's it's a it's a program that was started in 2007. So they've been, you know, giving assurances uh, to, to a certain individuals. But this new new bail, bailout will be for government employees. <laughs> you know, they're already on the dole. And uh, different groups have qualified under that first program in 2007. But the goal is to blanket just to give it, you know, declare the whole thing bankrupt. And uh, that that to me is sad. I happen to uh, believe that there's a different way to do this. I was in office when uh, Carter was in office and he made the uh, Department of Education, you know, national and taken over, even though it was Eisenhower that started all that nationalization of our education system. But uh, that is, uh, 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 you know, something that we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have a Department of Education, we shouldn't have the federal government in education. It, there's, there's other ways uh, to do it. You know, the early history of our country depended on more local, private uh, education, but it didn't take long for the government to get involved because that is their number one goal. If you read the theories of many who want totalitarianism and then they admit it, the socialists, Marxists, and uh, c communists, they admit, control education and I also believe very sincerely that the destruction of our republic started a little over a hundred years ago when the progressives entered into this education business wholesale and was were able to take over our school system both at the college level as well as at the local level there's an easy answer for this. Just look for guidance from the Constitution and look for peace and prosperity through the limitation of government power, and it can be achieved. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Come back soon.